Yeah, this is a series of teaching on uh, <clears throat> talking about the goodness of God. And last Sunday, uh, we started this teaching. Last Sunday, uh, I made a little bit of introduction regarding this subject. Uh, recently, I, 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 I'm not doing any preaching, but more on teaching. And I believe we need to learn more from, from the Word of God, okay? And it's very important, okay, that uh, we get to listen, try our best to listen, the book. And I know you're very comfortable with those seats, uh, fully padded seats, uh, and to the point where you will fall asleep. I understand that. Uh, but try your best, okay? to listen to the Word of God. So last Sunday, we started out on, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, they have this uh, wrong uh, view of who God is. Um, and they think that uh, just everything that is happening uh, around us, especially bad things that are happening, uh, it's coming from God or it's the work of God. They attributed those things that are happening that are bad to God, as if he's the one doing it and causing it. Uh, the wars, uh, the pandemic that we've been through, or the problems that we are facing, or the illnesses right, uh, right now maybe that you're struggling with because of this lack of understanding of who God is and of his goodness and, uh, and of his nature, we th they think that it's, the one, it's God the one doing it. Okay? And the reason they have those... Uh, Understanding is because it's, it's what they're hearing from the pulpit, okay? And others are not uh, regularly searching the Word of God, okay? So they just casually read the Word of God, so... Um, and then hearing those kind of preaching, then they will end up having this wrong uh, uh, understanding of who God is, okay? Partly they do, but not the full understanding of who God is. And others, they do search the scripture. They are studying regularly the scriptures. But there's still a difficult time the Paul understanding it because uh, they think God is, especially God in the Old Testament is a different God and the God of the New Testament is a different one. So they think God is, is schizophrenic, Paul, in which we know God is not schizophrenic um, because we believe that the entire Bible from the Old New Testament, uh, Genesis to Revelation is entirely uh, unified, okay? So it's very important for us to harmonize the Old and the New Testament. We need to understand the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament. The, the Old Testament alone and the Old Covenant alone, well, you, you can get a, not the full picture of who God is, okay? That's why we get so mixed up, and when you and I meditate the, the Word of God, we have a lot of questions. Why is it uh, Jesus said, it, or this is what happened in the Old Testament. Now, come, now in the New Testament, is different, right? And there's a, little, uh, a, a big difference, but that doesn't mean it contradicts itself. Okay? Even when Jesus was here, there are some teachings that Jesus taught the people before his death that are not really applied after his resurrection. Okay? Well, from the whole counsel of God, the Bible is perfect. It's, it was written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing wrong with it, right? But again, we have to harmonize the Old and the New Testament so that we can have this better understanding of who God is. And I believe, Nepal, our God is a good God. That is His nature. God is a loving God. You will see how much God loves us from by the time He created the universe. In fact, there is a scripture in, uh, in, the, in Ephesians, it says that even before the foundation of the world, God already loved us. Isn't that amazing? And sometimes we think the love of God started, His goodness is when He showed it, and when He demonstrated His love based on John 3, 16, that He gave His only begotten Son. But actually, His love, His mercy, and, and his, the forgiveness, Nepal, already started since the beginning of time. It was already there. It is God's will for us to experience His love and forgiveness and His mercy. 
And that's why we have to study the scriptures. Uh, for me as a pastor, been the pastor for many years, uh, heard and learned a lot. And we thank God for those teachers, men and women of God, serves as mentors in my life. But then there, there was never a time that I would say that I, will, I have stopped learning because I knew everything. No. But every preacher, every teacher, it doesn't matter how anointed they are, they are still learning. And there's something, there's some things that I'm learning that I thought, uh, na po, no? that's it. No. Uh, I don't think you can learn anything way, I mean, over or new or God would reveal something new. And then you will, you will realize as you study the scriptures, God is still revealing something. Okay? Praise God. So, so today, in the uh, we have examples last Sunday uh, regarding how God is, uh, is operating the Old Testament, the uh, treating the people like, uh, well, God, in a way, they did experience judgment from God, uh, like Elijah or um, King Ahab and Jezebel, the they experienced judgment from God and some uh, a prophet of God, uh, Isaiah, uh, I mean Elijah, prophesied about their death and came to pass. Uh, and also Ahab's son, King Isaiah, right when he got sick and he sent uh, his a, a group of people uh, to inquire of the God of Ekron what he had to say about his sickness, and then they met Elijah, right. And then he sent forth upon realizing it was Elijah that uh, his messenger met. He, he sent uh, a group of soldiers, 50 of them or 51, including the captain. And then the way God uh, deals with them, the way God protected Elijah is that a fire came down from heaven and it consumed 51 of them. And then another group, a fire from heaven came down and consumed 51 of them. And the last group, the third group of uh, soldiers but because the captain asked for mercy and he approached Elijah humbly respected Elijah's uh, position that he is and acknowledged that he is a servant of God the prophet of God see he received mercy they didn't die their life was spared and Elijah went with them and he appeared to the king and I believe if the first two did that they probably would have been alive in the book See, and so, so what happened is, if you will look at God, uh, you know, as the God who just simply judge people and fire will fall from heaven and start, uh, you know, consuming everyone that, uh, that uh, maybe did something that, that isn't right before God, okay? Then it's, it's hard to, when you read the, old, old, uh, the New Testament, you, you will have this, uh, you will be confused in a way, or you will assume that God is still doing that. Well, now, as a New Testament believer, okay, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because this is what happened with, uh, prior to Jesus Christ dying, when he came here, uh, his disciples, James and John, uh, this time where they passed through Samaria, and prior to that, they were accepted because of the Samaritan woman. She came to know the Lord, and then the whole town uh, believe on Jesus Christ. And by this time, they are passing again through Samaria, but the people in Samaria rejected Jesus. Because they think, the reason they are rejected him, because he's heading toward Jerusalem. He's, they're thinking he's heading toward Jerusalem. And the Samaritan people, they hated the Jews but, uh, in Jerusalem. So, James and John didn't like what they heard, okay, what the Samaritan did to Jesus Christ, that they rejected him. And then they said, one of them said, should we well, call a fire down from heaven to consume, to consume them? Should we not? I don't know, should we not? Should we uh, call down fire down from heaven and consume them? So they were really angry. Well, uh, talagang <laughs> siguro umuusok yung tenga nila no? sa galit. No? And they wanted to emulate 
what Elijah did in the Old Testament. Because a fire came down from heaven to judge those people and consume them. So they think they can do the same thing. And they think that Jesus Christ wanted to do the same thing. So pinangunahan nilang Panginoon. Would you like us to, to call fire down from heaven? They didn't even say, uh, Jesus, will you f call fire down from heaven to consume them? No, they said, would you want us to call fire down from heaven to consume them? And Jesus Christ that, uh, said, you don't know what manner of spirit you have, for I came not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Okay. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Remember in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And we beheld His glory full of grace and truth. When Jesus Christ came, I believe in John chapter 14, uh, I believe it's, it's Thomas who asked Jesus Christ, Lord, show us the Father, okay, so that we may see who the Father, okay? Uh, tell us who the Father, or show us who the Father is. And then Jesus Christ said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Right? Is that what the scriptures say? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So based on what Jesus Christ did, uh, said to uh, to Philip, yeah, I thought it was Thomas. It's Philip. But Jesus is the walking, the living word that when we see Jesus, we see the Father. Okay? The problem is that we are seeing God through the Old Testament. Nepal. Instead of seeing God through Jesus. So we are sometimes confused of who God is and the relationship that he wanted with us. Now in the Old Testament, as we have seen that God is dealing with human beings and the way he dealt, dealt with sin in a different manner. Ibapo in the way... God is dealing okay, with uh, humankind in the Old Testament. But when Jesus came, nung narito, po, narito na po ang Panginoon, through Jesus Christ, or Jesus brought the true revelation of who the Father is to us, mankind. And He operated very differently. Okay? If you are a student of the Word and have read the Bible, you will, you will notice upon reading the Bible that it was never the desire of God to deal with human beings so firmly or so strongly because it wasn't His real, real character or nature. Okay? But because we haven't known this, we don't study the Scriptures or because the people behind the pulpit, um, you know, this is not how the way they communicate it to us. So, we have this mixed impression of who God is. And so, we have, because of that, we haven't seen God in all His, his fullness. Okay? So, partly lang po, yung pagkakilala natin sa Panginoon. In Ephesians 3.18, I don't think it's in the screen. Most of us don't really understand the depth of the love of God, the depth of His mercy, and the depth of His compassion that He has toward us. That's why Paul wants us to know how high, how deep, how wide is the love of God. Okay? So when you don't know God fully, you hesitate to approach Him because you have this mistaken impression of God. You don't know if God is okay or not okay, if He will accept you or not, especially if you made some mistakes or disappointed God. Okay? So, nag-aalangan po kayo. You are in doubt. Okay? Because you don't know fully who God is right? in the Scriptures. So, that's why it's very important to harmonize po yung, yung word ng God. It's 
only then that you can get uh, a clear understanding of who God is. Amen? Now, there's a, one scripture, uh, I mean, in chapter 1 of Hebrews, verse 1 to 3, and this is what it says in New Living Translation. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. So that's how God spoke long ago in the Old Testament through the prophets. And now in these final days, and I believe the final days started when uh, Christ came or when the Spirit was poured out in the book of Acts, He has spoken to us through His Son. So, nagsasalita po dati through His prophets, and now, in His last days, final days, He has spoken to us through His Son. And God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, He created the universe. Okay? Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Okay? The Son... Now, this is New Living Translation. The Son, he's talking about Jesus Christ, radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. So, Jesus Christ expresses the very nature of God. If you have seen Jesus and have known Jesus in the Word, you have known and seen God. And he sustains everything by the power or by the mighty power of his command when he had cleansed us from our sins. That was really good. That's past tense, the book. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. So in other words, Jesus is the exact, exact, exact representation of God. He's the exact representation of his true character, and his true nature. If you have seen Jesus, you have seen God. If you know Jesus, according to the scriptures, you have known God. And we can see the love, the mercy, and forgiveness God offers us in the New Testament through Christ were always available to mankind even in the Old Testament. Do you know what the basis of being saved from Genesis is also by grace through faith? You see, that's where the love of God is already there, the mercy, okay? And I know uh, if you have a Catholic background like myself growing, the only understanding I have of God is a God who judges, who condemns, who kills, who punishes. <laughs> I can be honest with you guys. That's how I was brought up. That's what I heard. That's what my parents communicated to me in the book. And that's why you have to be careful. Remember when you were young? If you will say something about God, if you will, uh, in terms of your behavior, you have to be careful because you will be what? punish. So growing up, I knew God as a God who is just about to judge me every time I uh, did something wrong. I never, I was not taught about God who is love, a God who is mercy. It's more on, I have to do this. I, it's more on uh, focusing on the law. Okay, You have to, if you didn't do this, then this is what will happen to you. Okay. If, if you behave, if you're nice, then the Lord will bless you. Okay? It's so hard but growing that way. But maybe not may, many of you did grow up the way I grew up, about my understanding with God. But I believe majority of you here growing up, that's your understanding with God. And now we are learning. About. Again, I would write, uh, like to repeat it. And, about, and you know, his love, his his goodness has been available, not only in the New Testament. It, was, it has been available uh, to every human being from the beginning of time in Genesis. 
But the response of human beings of his goodness in the Old Testament forced God to deal with human beings more strongly than he desired. So iba po yung nag-response niya sa kanyang pagiging mabait, mabuti, at mahabagin. Okay? So once we look and harmonize po all the New Testament, we will see clearly God is not a God who is judge or a judge. His nature is that God is a God of love. Okay? You will never find in the scripture that God is a God of judge. He is just, he is holy. He judges righteously. But his very nature is a God of love. <laughs> now, just hang on, Paul. Okay, just bear with me, and you will learn, hopefully, you will learn a little bit of this, a little bit or more. Okay. Now, let's see the grace of God and the goodness of God in the Old Testament. Okay. Now, if Jesus, when he came here, he is the exact representation of God. If you have seen him, you have seen God. If Jesus represents of who God is, the nature and character of God, just exactly what God is really doing in the Old Testament. It seems like God is so different in the Old Testament compared to who he is in the New Testament. So what was he doing with all these killings, with all this judgment, with all this punishment, these curses? Right? Kaya yung iba sinyo po, ha? I mean, you skip other books in the Bible because you are having a difficult time understanding it. Okay? And now why are we doing this teaching, Pastor? Because we, we, you don't go to cell groups? <laughs> okay? Where will you hear the Word of God? Unless you're reading the Word of God every day and, and asking other teachers here, you know, and, and then try to learn, become a student of the Word. You learn more about the Word of God, you know. But not a lot of Christians are like that, okay? Well, if you are a believer, God loves you, you know, Paul. Uh, if you don't read your Bible every day, the Lord loves you, okay? So the Word of God is telling us very clear what God was doing in the Old Testament. This scripture, probably you've read it, passed through it several times, but you don't understand or you're not really trying to understand what this scripture is all about. But some of you probably would be surprised at what I'm going to say. But there are people here already knew what I'm about to share to you. Romans 5.13, Romans 5.13. So what is exactly that God is doing in the Old Testament? If God is a God of mercy, just, I mean, a uh, uh, good uh, and loving, it seems like I never saw that in the Old Testament. Okay. Now it says here, for until the law Okay, let's do it slowly. Parang si Kuya Cesar. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Walang batas. Now, I know, hindi pa mag-register, hindi pa natin ma-absorb yun, Okay. So, just pay attention. For until the law, sin was in the world. Started, that started with Adam and Eve. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So, we'll find out when did the law started. Was the law given in the beginning? Because human beings, Adam and Eve, fell into sin. Okay. So, that means it was imputed to them. Okay. I mean, sin was imputed to them because there's already law. Okay, So sin was in the world. In the Passion Translation, sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law. 
but it was not charged against them where no law existed. You won't know, you won't be violating, there's no violation if you are running 100 kilometers per hour here at Logan Avenue when there's no sign that says 50, the maximum is 50 kilometers per hour. The police cannot pull you over and charge you and find you because there is no, okay? But if there is, they start putting that uh, 50, the maximum is 50 kilometers per hour and you went about 70 or, <laughs> I know, titikitan ko po kumisan 65, di ba, above. So kumisan nasa 60 lang tayo, okay pa. And then you, you will explain, if there is a police, or there is uh, mga nagraradar dyan, may mga camera, you know, you will expect that there's a letter on the mail later on after a few weeks. If you are running 70 and you pass uh, an area where there's a camera. Diba? Why? Kasi nandun na po, may sign na doon, may batas na doon. Pero kung wala, it doesn't matter kung ano mo speed nyo. Okay? So sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law, but it was not charged against them where no law existed. Now let's talk about the law. When we hear the term law, sometimes we believers, we think of the Old Testament, diba? But the law used here is referring to the Mosaic law. What is Mosaic law? Which, this are, which includes the Ten Commandments, the Big Ten, yung judgments, yung punishments, uh, yung ordinances, ceremonial, uh, ceremonial observances, the boys, so Old Testament. Now in Romans 5.13, it shows us that before the law of Moses, before the law was given, bago po binagay yung Mosaic law, na nandun sa uh, first five books of Moses, di ba? Torah, no po? Before that was introduced, sin was in the world. Nandiyan na po. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. So, kailan dumating yung law? It came Moses in Mount Sinai. But before that, sin was already in the world. Diba? Now, let's talk, the, let's talk about the word imputed. Sino po mga accountant dito? Alam po ninyo yung term na imputed. It's, uh, it's an accounting term. Na po. Uh, the word impute means to charge to one's account. Okay? Or to hold transgressions against someone. The word impute means to charge to one's account. So in other words, yung pong kasalanan, sin, was not being charged in our account or charged in their account, dun po sa Old Testament, before the law was given. Sin was not being held against the people until God gave the law to Moses. Wow, Pastor. Ganun ba yun? And I thought the Lord was already charging in their account when Adam and sin I, I don't mean you fell into sin, disobeyed God. No, it says here, it was not imputed that until the law came. Okay? So as you can see, what we will see here is the grace of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God is still extended even after Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Huh? Well, yun po yung makikita natin. Kasi po, ang, ang pinag-uusapan po natin, gano, gano'ng kabuti ang Panginoon. Okay? Consistent po siya. It's not like God is really bad and angry and old and then now He's in the mood in the New Testament, now He's a good God, but then He, he was bad. No, it's still the same. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus Christ is the exact representation of God, representation of God, right? If you have seen Jesus, you have seen God. And he showed who God is when he came here on earth. So most of the people's concept of God is that the moment sin entered the Garden of Eden, the wrath of God began to be released upon the human being. 
Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled, and then God is really angry. You know, His wrath was released to everyone. So people, you know, Christians believe that, uh, even Christians, you know, that God, since God was holy, and man is unholy because they sinned, you know, therefore God has to separate himself because he is holy from someone who is unholy. He is righteous, someone who is unrighteous. He is perfect, someone who is imperf imperfect. So, since Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they have sinned, now God has to separate himself. Okay? So, God separated himself. This is what uh, a lot of people are thinking. And that is the reason he kept kicked them out or drove them out of the Garden of Eden. Now, I would like to encourage you to read over and over again in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis when this has all happened. Okay. So a lot of people believe that since God is holy and now man, mankind is sinful, he has to separate himself and he drove Adam and Eve away from the garden, from his presence, because he, his holiness cannot stand to look upon someone who is sinful. Okay. But, okay, wag po natin kalimutan yung beauty. But there was a period of time from Adam until Moses when God was dealing with people out of love out of mercy, out of forgiveness, instead of wrath and judgment. Between, okay, the time of Adam until Moses. Because from Adam, there is no, sin is not imputed because the law wasn't given yet. It was almost 2,000 years when the law was given through Moses. When I said 2,000 years. Remember Adam got to live to be about 1,000 years? When you think about the lifespan, almost a thousand years of a human being can live that long. Okay? okay? Now, so God is holy and man is sinful. God is light and man is in darkness, no? But you see, but God's love is so great that he did not just expel man from his presence. Makikita po natin, human beings, humankind, still experience the presence of God. Now, contrary po dun sa natutunan natin. Hello, uh, uh, do you get what I'm saying? I know uh, a lot of us, that's what our understanding. They sinned, then they were expelled, then they don't have anything to do with the presence of God. God doesn't communicate with them, there's no fellowship and things like that. But we will see how good God is. And there's still fellowship. And they are still in the presence of God. They are not in the Garden of Eden. But let's see why they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Why is it that God expelled them out? Lord, I pray na bawat isa po nakabukas yung ano nami because uh, we have to understand this in order for us to fully understand what Jesus Christ has done in the New Testament. Otherwise, magkakaroon pa rin tayo ng uh, uh, medyo Makukonfuse pa rin tayo na po kung sino yung God natin na po. Uh, we're having a hard time to harmonize na po uh, yung old tsaka new. Okay, let's uh, pay attention. As a whole na po, God dealt in mercy toward men and He did not impute their sin or holding their sins against them until the days of Moses when the law was given. Doon po na impute yung sin. It was charged on their account when the law was given. Kaya po na example ko kanina, di ba? But the whole time before that, God is dealing with them with His kindness and His mercy, His forgiveness. Okay? In Genesis chapter 3, 22 and 23, let's take a look at how God dealt with humankind. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. So that means Adam and Eve, they ate 
the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also up the tree of life and eat and live forever. Okay? Ayan po niyo magstay mo na sa isipin niyo. Lest he put forth and take also the tree of life, eat it, and live forever. Therefore, so ibig sabihin, ito po yung kasunod to, okay? Uh, wag niyong karam, kapag nakakita kayo ng therefore, <laughs> okay? I-find out po natin kung ano yung therefore. So kadugtong pa rin ho to, di ba? Yung previous scripture. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Okay, bakit po siya inali, bakit sila inalis sa Garden of Eden? Lest he put forth his hand and also and take the tree of life, eat it, and live forever. So they already fell into sin here. Po? Ito pong sabi niya after they fell into sin. Okay. In verse 24, so here, sin entered the world when Adam and Eve fell into temptation of the serpent, uh, the temptation of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. In verse 24, so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherub or cherubims, mga mighty angels po to. Cherubims, okay? Hindi po ito yung mga cute na maliliit na may pakpak tapos mataba. Okay? Hindi ito. <laughs> mga mighty angels po ito. Okay. And a flaming sword which turn every way. What is the purpose of that? The purpose of that flaming sword and mighty cherub? To keep the way of the tree of life. Okay? You, as you can see from verse 22 to 24, it's talking about uh, expelling them from the Garden of Eden so that they won't take the tree of life. Why? Well, we will see how God, how loving God and merciful and how good God is here. And this is why he sent them out. Because he didn't want them to eat the tree of life which would mean that if they ate the tree of life, that they will live forever in their sinfulness. Yeah. Now, just try to imagine that. They fell into sin. They have the sinful nature, evil in their hearts, and now they partake of the tree of life and they're going to live forever. Imagine what would happen later on in the future. Diba? So God did not send them out because he couldn't tolerate them. That's the reason he expelled them from the Garden of Eden. Now we all know Adam and Eve, they disobeyed, they rebelled. They transgress against God, but he did not expel them from his presence. The presence of God still went with Adam and Eve and their descendants outside of the Garden of Eden. If you say they were cut up, they cannot fellowship, then after they were expelled, there's no more fellowship, talking God to man and mankind to God. But still after that, we will see how they, can st how they continue to communicate to one another. Okay? That's if we are reading the, the scriptures. Okay? Nandiyan pa ho pa kayo? Okay, binabagala lang ako natin. Okay? Uh, so even after Adam and Eve sinned and they left the Garden of Eden, God was still communicating, still talking, and still walking with Adam and Eve and his, and their kids. <laughs> uh, so there's still fellowship. Now this is contrary to what most believers have thought in the that the Holy God, how can a Holy God still fellowship 
and you know with the sinful mankind diba? that's what i thought before and and sometimes i do preach it it was cut up there's no fellowship no remember god was not imputing their trespasses against them before the law okay so wag po ninyong kalimutan yung romans chapter 5 ito po nangyari dito he is still fellowshipping with them after they were expelled in the Garden of Eden. Now, the reason God sent Adam and Eve out of the Garden was because He loved them so much. Now, you think that He is angry, no? Hindi mo niya matolerate yung ginawa nila. Kaya sila pinalabas. No, it's because God loves them. God loves us. Okay? He didn't want them to partake of the tree of life and live forever in their bodies that were corrupted by sin. Now, pag pumunta daw po sa, tayo sa church, make sure gamitin din natin yung isip natin. <laughs> okay? Hello? mag po tayo, okay? Ano po natin? So the reason he didn't want them to partake to eat at the tree of life or access of the tree of life, eat it and live forever is because they don't, God want, doesn't want them to get stuck in the bodies you know, that were so corrupted by sin. Yeah, magiging maganda, lalo po paganda, paganda ito, no? But sin, you know, this is what happened. Sin entered and sin gave Satan the opportunity to put what? All kinds of evil stuff in mankind. And point sickness, disease, curses to human beings. Okay? Because of sin, Satan had this opportunity to put all kinds of sickness and disease, all kinds of curses on man and death in the ball. So imagine if you have a cancer and you're not gonna die. Yeah? Try to imagine that. I imagine if you are a leper and you're not going to die and it's just eating your body, but you're not going to die. Because you have eaten the tree of life. Huh? Just living, imagine living for all eternity, having your body being destroyed by sickness and disease. But you're not dying. And we would say that's like hell on the earth. <laughs> of course, hell is worse, no? Just try to imagine that. If you are sick right now, terribly sick, you can't even endure it. It's hard even to endure it for a few hours, though. Or let's say, if you have a toothache, You wanted to go to the dentist right away and have them take the, your teeth, right? Now imagine, not just for days or weeks or... Ah, no, medyo lame po yung anong yun. Just imagine living for eternity in that sinful state and all the result of sin on you, but you're not going to die. So makikita po natin dito, it was the mercy of God that sent mankind out of the garden and away from the tree of life. You can see how good God is. It was for your own good. It wasn't because I don't love you anymore. Because I don't want to see your face anymore. You know, because I hated you. After all what I, that I've done, and this is what, you disobeyed me? No, it was because of His mercy. I don't want you to take partake of the tree of life in your sinful state. I don't want to see you living forever with all these curses and sin, sickness in your body, in your life. And if you think the relationship of a parents to their children, sometimes that happens too. Naalala po niyo kung may mga sinasabing parents, it's for your own good, the reason I... Diba? And they misinterpreted misinterpreted something that you you're punishing you hated them no it wasn't because you hate them because you love them the reason you did what you did to them 
Now, I cannot mention specifically kung ano yun, pero you know what I'm talking about, di ba? Okay? And sometimes, akala po nila hate or anger, but actually it's love. But be, since they don't understand it yet, especially mga hindi pa talaga nag-grow or mga bata pa, hello? <laughs> di ba nagpapalaki ka ng mga bata, no? pag teenager, hindi pa sila fully developed. Even if they are fully developed, there's still a lot of maturity, no? Okay? They don't understand everything. Okay? Now, for a person who believes in Christ, okay, I know we've been talking about if they eat the, fruit, uh, the tree of, the, uh, of life, no, they will live forever in that sinful state. No, but, but if you are a believer and in Jesus, of course, there will come a time no, that our body will be replaced with an incorruptible body. Right? So God sent Adam and Eve out of the garden because he didn't want them and us to live forever in that corrupt bodies, no po, subject to all of the things we are subject because of sin. Now, let, let's move uh, ahead, no po, in chapter 4. Now, in chapter 4, after Adam and Eve sinned, and after they were expelled out of the Garden of Eden, the paradise, God was still talking and communicating and walking with them. The only reason they were expelled so that they won't partake of the tree of life, but because God doesn't want them to live forever in that sinful state. Okay. Isang sin lang po na commit natin eh, iba na po pakiramdam natin eh. Okay. And if you are categorizing sin, you you committed something terrible. I mean, iba na po yung feeling. And that's why they can sometimes they can. Now ima imagine that the sin that later on that they will discover. Especially when the law was given. Po. Imagine po kung ano magiging, I mean, if God showed Adam and Eve kung ano po yung result ng sin dahil sa disobedience nila, eh baka hindi na po nagtagal yung mag-asawa yun. Okay? Okay, in Genesis chapter 4, after this, they, they sinned and they, exp they were expelled out of the garden, we can see that there's still communication. We, we know there is still communication about because God was talking to, to them. Now, He wasn't talking to them in their spirit. They're not born again. There's no born again uh, new creation thing that God put, I mean, living in their spirit like in the New Testament church. Now, God, the same way that God is talking in the cold of the day before they were expelled, in the same the way God's talking to them because... Because as you can see in chapter 3 in the book and chapter 4, I mean chapter 4, God is still talking to Cain and Abel. So, read your Bible in the book. <laughs> this is, uh, no, uh, prior to you becoming a Christian, you already probably, you know this. There's still communication going on. So, let's see for example, the person with a question, how did Cain and Abel know what sacrifice or how to bring sacrifice? How did they learn that? Do they have a book? They don't have a Bible yet. There's nothing written about sacrifice. So, paano po nila lalaman kung paano mag-offer na sacrifice? Blood, animal, the point, first fruits of their harvest. Paano po nila lalaman yun? It wasn't in their spirit. Because if you will read the chapter 4, na po, as we can see, God said, God is talking. It's an audible voice. He's talking to them, communicating audibly. So how did they know to bring, to do that kind of sacrifice, uh, offering the first fruits of their labor? Again, they don't have any instructions, uh, I mean, written in a paper and explained to them in the Garden of Eden. And besides, there's no transgression to atone for because the law wasn't there yet. The sin is not imputed to them. Okay? So they understood about the sacrifices and they understood how to approach God because God was still talking with Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Right? Because he does talk. In chapter 4. After Cain and Abel, Abel over their sacrifices, in chapter 4, verse 5, it says, but unto Cain and to his offering, God had not respect. So God did not respect Cain's offering. He wasn't pleased with the offering of um, Cain. Okay. 
Now, we're not going to talk about why he wasn't pleased or the kind of offering. Uh, marami pong pwedeng pag-usapan dito. Okay? So, how did they know God did not respect Cain's offering? Paano nila lalaman na hindi naging katanggap-tanggap po yung offering ni Cain sa Diyos? It is very clear because God was talking to them. They are so aware of God because He was talking and talking and fellowshipping with them. In Genesis 4, 6, it says, The Lord said to Cain, Nagsalita ang Diyos kay Cain. Now, if you are not convinced about, uh, about this scripture, na po, and I know you'll think, you will think a lot of ways, oh, maybe this is how you talk to God. Maybe this is how. No, God's still talking. I believe God's still talking audibly. The Lord said to Cain. So here we have God speaking in an audible voice to Cain. Just the same thing as he did to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day when they were in the Garden of Eden. Okay? And, and verse 6 and 7, same chapter po. Now, it would be nice if you have your Bibles, tapos sinusundan niyo ako, no? Uh, I think nandito po yun. Why are you so angry and upset? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected and so depressed? <laughs> Sabi po sa ibang version, no? You will be accepted if you do what is right, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. So see, your conversation po nila, po? God was talking face to face. God was talking audibly with Cain and Abel. Yeah. So when Cain saw that God was pleased with Abel's sacrifice more than his. He was so overcome with jealousy and anger. And what happened? He killed his brother. He doesn't even know what murder is. Okay. Ah! When he killed his brother, he didn't realize, oh, I'm a murderer. So the Bible shows us that God spoke to Cain about in Genesis 4, 9. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where's Abel? Kasi pinatay po niya yung dahil sa, sa jealousy, di ba? Pinatay niya yung kapatid niya. And ito pong sabi niya. See, see how they are talking? Yung conversation po nila? Where's your brother? Okay. Where's Abel? I don't know. Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? Or am I my brother's babysitter? Di ba? Why are you asking me? No? Now, tignan po ninyo. Kung pumatay kayo ng tao, di ba? Kasi po, ito po yung first murderer on the face of the earth. He was the first murderer. Okay? Fresh na fresh pa ho yung pagkakapatay niya sa kapatid niya. Maring duguan pa siya. Tapos, narinig niya Diyos. Where is your brother? Well, am I my brother's keeper? Diba? Tingnan po niyo, parang hindi man siya nagulat eh. Pero kung ikaw, pumatay ka, tapos, diba? Tinanong ko, oh, asan yung kapatid mo? Okay, alam naman Diyos, alam niya, pinatay mo kapatid mo. Diba? Eh baka mamatay, magkaroon ko ng heart attack. Tap. I mean, iba po yung reaction mo, diba? Diba? Pero tingnan po yung reaction. You see, his reaction, po, am, I, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know. Diba? I don't know where he is. First murderer. Po. We will respond differently. And the reason, no, if you were the one who murdered someone, but the reason Cain was, that's the way he, he, was, he responded to God. Because for them, it's not something unusual. Because they're already talking to each other, even before this happened. There's some fellowship between man, man, mankind and God. And the reason he did that, because Cain was so used to talking with God. Huh? Now, maybe you don't grasp that right now because we already have the Old and the New Testament. 
we've read a lot from the Bible, na po. we probably have a different reaction. But this is the first people, na po, in pumanak ni Adam and Eve. Okay? So he did that because they were used to talking, or he, Cain, was used to talking to God every day. It wasn't unusual. Okay? So meron na pong familiarity dun sa bosses ng Diyos, di ba? That God is still walking, talking with man, even after sin entered the human race, na po, even when they expelled na po, um, from the Garden of Eden. So as we can see here, he murdered his brother, the, bo- the Bible says, he wa- but he was not imputing, God is not imputing sin or holding their trespasses against them. But that doesn't mean God is approving it. Okay? So we have to apply that. Romans 5, what, 13 or 11? So God was not imputing sin or holding their trespasses against them. So he was not treating them the way the Old Testament law has revealed sin should be treated because there is no law yet. If you murdered someone under the law, what will happen? Okay. But since there is no law, it was, doesn't mean God approved the murder. But since there is no law, God is not holding the trespasses against Cain or his trespasses. So he is not treating them the way the Old Testament law as rebuilt sins should be treated because God is operating in love and mercy and forgiveness. Okay? So as we can see here that God still showed his disapproval, of course, uh, uh, with, with, with what Cain's did to his brother. Okay? He didn't approve Cain's murdering his brother. Okay? <clears throat> Para lang po maging malinaw yun, okay? So God showed his disapproval of Cain's killing Abel. And let Cain know what the consequences will be. Ito po. When you sin, there is a consequence. In John 4.14, 4, now, this is what he's, uh, he told Cain, now you are cursed and banished and banished from the ground which has swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From, from now on, you will be homeless wanderer on the earth. In Bible trivia, who is the first homeless person? The boss, Cain. Okay, you, from now on you will be a homeless. This is the consequence of sin. The boss, Cain became so fearful and he said, in verse 14, you have banished, banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wanderer. Anyone who finds me will kill me. Tignan po ninyo ang ginawa ng Lord. Let's see what God did. Instead of bringing judgment to the very first murderer, God put a mark on Cain and he protected him. Tignan po ninyo. So verse 15, the Lord replied, because Cain said, anyone who finds me will kill me. And verse 15, the Lord replied, no, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who might try to kill him. Now, contrary po yon dun sa pop, popular ideas, di ba? God did not uh, approve yung sin, but he protected the first. Where there is no law. Po. Eh, ambo natin mag-sync in yun, no? Okay, it's 12.35, I believe, accurate po yon. Yeah. <clears throat> Ako na po may maunang titingin sa oras, okay, bago kayo. Now, tingnan po ninyo, okay? So, yung marami po yung mga religious ideas na po, uh, <clears throat> contrary po ito, okay? Because, because God's protection is still there on the first murderer, but doesn't mean He approved dun sa sin, na po? So we have to take a look at the scriptures. Now, tingnan po natin nung nandun na yung law. Okay, sa so Numbers 15.35, yun pong difference, okay? 
under the Old Testament law, no na ibigay na batas sa Mount Sinai kay Moses, the four, a man went out to gather some sticks. During Sabbath day, he's just gathering some sticks to light a fire. During Sabbath day, and he was stoned to death. Now, compare po ninyo to the first murderer and experience God's protection, God's protection. God put a mark, and then he will be avenged seven times by whoever killed Cain. Ito po, <laughs> kawawa naman to, no? Nagagather lang po ng kahoy. Baka siguro, panggato, magluluto. But it happened during Sabbath day. And he need to be stoned to death. Because the law was given. Okay? So God protected Cain, who murdered his brother, but commanded Moses to stone to death someone who just picked some, uh, picked some sticks during Sabbath day. See, if you don't harmonize, what you will see is that God is inconsistent. Kaya nako confuse po tayo the way we read the scriptures, di ba? And we ended up telling other people the same thing. Okay. There's a difference when the law was given. But the time before the law was given, God is not imputing their trespasses and sins against them. Okay? So the reason it looks that way is because until the law came, okay, God was not holding man's, mankind's sins against them. In other words, he was overlooking. He's not imputing sin or charging it to their account as it pertained to man's fellowship with him. Less than 2,000 years from Adam before the law was given, God was not imputing stress passes and sins against them because there is no law. Now, the effects... Kita po natin the effects of sin. I don't know, probably we'll, we'll stop na, uh, about to stop the po. In Genesis chapter 3, so we read about the sin entering the world because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. And we all know the story, na po. He created Adam and Eve, fellowshipping with them in the cool of the day. Na po. And then Satan uh, tempted uh, Eve into sinning and also gave some to his uh, to her husband, na po. And they sinned against God, and they saw, and when they ate, Adam and Eve, or Eve and Adam, or Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they saw that they were naked. They hid themselves from God. You know what? In partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's the only time, that's the only thing that they saw upon themselves, that they were naked. They never saw sin. They just realized they were naked. Pag-uusapan po natin yung nakedness, yung pagiging hubad na hubad nila next Sunday. Uh, hopefully, uh, it's anniversary next Sunday. No? Uh, gusto ko po maging mabagal tayo dito kasi I think kung maging biblis tayo, I don't think we were able to get it. Not unless you already have an idea and have studied it and you know about what I'm talking about. I'm not telling you guys to believe this. I want you to read the Bible, okay? And there are, uh, you know what? There are a lot of things that we, na hindi ba tayo mag-agree sa certain subject, okay? But this is helping us how we can harmonize all the New Testament. Ano po? So hopefully lumilinaw po ngayon, every time you read the New Testament, makikita po natin kung ano po yung pinakilala. Consistent po siya. He never did change. Still a good God, Okay? God in the old and the new. So it takes a while. Na po. We have to study the scriptures. And it's really good. I, anyone here just excited when you are reading the Bible? It's really good, diba? Right? Especially when, when the Lord is revealing something to you that, oh, I never seen this before. Okay? But you have to study the scriptures. Na po. And, and then ask questions. Po. Okay? Na, of course, hindi naman po namin alam yung lahat. Okay. Maski sino po dalabahasa, hindi naman po alam lahat. Okay. So we need to have a personal revelation of 
uh, God's Word sa buhay po natin as we read the Scriptures. Okay? So, next Sunday po, uh, see, uh, ano po, uh, we will continue what we're talking about, but this is very good. Okay? I want you to understand this so that we can get the whole picture of who God is, not just part. If you focus on the Old Testament, you're just seeing God, partly of who God is, but the, not the, His whole nature. Ano po? Okay. So, okay lang po. Open na tayo for ano. Let me ask a question. If you really listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, why, why, why is it that Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden after they fall into sin? Why? So, did they want? So, did they want to partake of the tree of life? And live forever at their sinful state. But it, it's still, you can see how God loves them. But remember, God already made a provision. When they found themselves naked, they covered, they sued feed leaves for themselves. But then God's provision is someone's a blood has to be shed and the role provided. Okay? Now, we will cover that later on, but not today, okay? Let's all stand up. Kaya po, nakaupo ako. I think you can preach sitting na po. Hindi <laughs> yun. And the good thing about knowing uh, yung nature ng God, yung knowing how good God is, and knowing who Jesus is, when you know Jesus, you know God. Mababago po yung tingin natin sa bawat isa. Okay. And I believe the way, the way we also share the gospel to other people will be different. So, there are some areas that God is correcting. Ano po, yung mga uh, narinig natin, natutunan. Okay. I don't think it's really, it's not that it's wrong. It's, it's just, we're just growing with learning. Yeah. E- even those preachers, well-known, phenomenal preachers, ano po, known right now, they even admitted that there are some things that they preached and taught before that, you know, that they thought it's really accurate or right and now they learn that they learn something so it's just simply God because we're still living housing in this corrupted body um, so we're not perfect but we need to be open Lord. thank you Jesus Let's bow our heads and be thankful to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, we have the Old and the New Testament. And although we have this entire 66 books inspired, Lord, by the Holy Spirit, the people who wrote this, we still there are so many things that we don't understand that we need to learn, but we thank you, Lord, for people whom you have anointed and get a revelation firsthand Lord on the scriptures and we are learning from them you provided teachers and preachers father to teach us so we're very thankful I pray Lord that our hearts will just remain open Lord and, and teachable and have a good attitude in terms of your word so that we will learn and and things that we have learned before that are not accurate, Lord, will be corrected, Father, so that we can know you fully and full well, Father. Uh, there's no contradiction, Lord, uh, in the scriptures on from the old and the new, new to the old. Lord, we just have to see and harmonize everything together and understand the old with the New Testament, Lord. Understand the old with what Jesus Christ has done when he came here because uh, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ 
he's full of grace and truth lord when when we know jesus because he's the exact representation of god the father when we know him lord we know we will know the father and no wonder god you peter said that we need uh, to have this knowledge of god and of jesus christ so that grace and peace be multiplied in our life so not only every sunday that we get to gather together that we are getting to know who jesus is and what he has done but during the week i pray that every one of us lord is to search the scripture not for us to be knowledgeable lord just to discover your love your mercy your your goodness you're extending lord uh, forgiveness to all people even from the beginning up until now and lord we're praying for for people also who doesn't know you never believe on jesus christ to put their faith in christ jesus and they will realize lord and and believe everything that you have done on the cross two thousand years ago why you you came and you suffered shed your blood and died and rose from the dead it is for our justification we pray lord that they will discover and know that their eyes will be open father that you already have reconciled yourself to to humankind to human beings to every one of us and we need to see that and discover that so that god we can reconcile so that we can come to you and experience that reconciliation so that we can have that peace with you lord and we pray that people will discover father that you are not angry with them because of their sin because sin was already been judged it's already been judged 2000 years ago on the body of the lord jesus christ lord we pray for our co-workers our friends uh, lord who doesn't know christ and we pray lord that you will uh put that in our spirit god and and may we and learn that so that that's the thing that we can communicate and tell other people and they too and their eyes will be open and see uh, how much you love them and lord it is it is your goodness that brings people to repentance it wasn't your judgment lord it is your goodness that brings people to repentance we pray that they will see how good you are through your son jesus christ and that will change their mind turn away from sin and you they will turn to you father so lord it is your will that everyone will be saved but they need to hear the gospel father so father we thank you and again lord i pray that next sunday we'll be here so that we can continue talking about the word of god and i'm praying for our brothers and sisters who are watching online lord and i pray also that their hearts will be open that you will touch them lord and also receive the word of god that they will experience forgiveness of sins lord and experience the love that you have for them i pray that they will believe on christ and confess jesus christ as their lord and savior so god i speak blessing and shalom to everyone who are watching and to everyone who are here we are so blessed thank you for being so good to us lord and as long as we are here on earth we will continue to experience your goodness upon our lives and we see that we can see that every day lord and we can just focus on that lord and that will help us so much every day lord whatever struggle that we are facing just knowing that there is a god who is good who is for us you will never leave us nor forsake us so thank you father we honor you and give you praise in jesus name and all the saints says amen and amen